Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. The Bible is a book of covenants and God is relational and he wants to have relationship with us. He's so serious about that relationship with you and me that he establishes it as a covenant. Meaning this is a solemn oath because God is very serious about relationship. And he keeps this covenant for a thousand generations. Meaning, look, this is a covenant that he's going to keep it. He's going to stand by this through time. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. As always, it's our joy, it's our delight to be able to come your way and spend this time with you. In God's Word. We trust you've been able to uh, spend time studying the Word of God yourself uh, on this great subject of covenant. Uh, just beginning to explore the Word of God to see uh, what being in covenant with God uh, really means to you personally uh, as you go about your daily life and how that impacts uh, your relationship with God and also your relationship with other people. And what we've also tried to encourage uh, our, our viewers to do is to uh, invite uh, their friends and try to form a small Bible study around the telecast that come to you uh, week after week so that you could study the Word of God together and learn from each other and also grow together uh, as we journey in the Word of God over uh, week after week. And our intent and our desire is to bring 
uh, uh, the Word of God to you, to really teach the Word of God, to expound the Word of God in the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we trust that you will be able to receive it and grow together in community and fellowship with other believers uh, wherever you live. Also, for those of you who might be watching, uh, who are unable to find a good local church uh, where you are, uh, we invite you to tune in to our live uh, telecasts uh, every Sunday morning. Uh, our, li- our services are streamed live through the internet, uh, so you can go to our church website and watch our Sunday services live uh, in case you don't have a good local church uh, where you are, or in case you're traveling somewhere and you need to connect, uh, receive the Word of God, just experience worship. Uh, you're welcome to join us live through the internet uh, every Sunday, 10.30 a.m. Uh, Indian time. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about covenant, and we want to continue studying God's Word on the covenant. And on the program today, I want to just take some time uh, to contrast the old and the new covenant, to just help us understand uh, what God has done differently, what God is doing differently under the new covenant, as opposed to what was happening under the old covenant. Now, we know uh, when we talk about the old covenant, we're talking about the the covenant that was given through Moses to the people of Israel. Uh, we know that there are other covenants that we find in the Old Testament, and we are not referring to those, uh, but we are speaking specifically about the covenant that was given through Moses to the people of Israel, and we use the term Old Covenant. Uh, sometimes people call it the Mosaic Covenant to identify that it was the one that was given through Moses to the people of Israel. So when you contrast that with the New Covenant, Uh, The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who, uh, through whom this new covenant is given. And uh, he is the one who establishes, he is the one who ratifies or brings into force uh, this new covenant. Both of these covenants are blood covenants. But apart from that, there are several uh, differences which I just want to highlight so that we can recognize what a rich, what a better, what a more glorious covenant we have. Uh, as part of the covenant, the new covenant that Jesus Christ has established for us. Now, under the old covenant, people had to live by the law. They had to follow the Ten Commandments, and they had to keep all the other instructions, uh, accompanying instructions in terms of sacrifices and feasts and other observances, uh, things that even uh, dictated their day-to-day life, uh, uh, their culture and their customs. But when we come into the new covenant, the new covenant is a covenant of grace. The law demands grace and powers. The law expects you and asks of you to keep these standards, uh, but people fail to do it. The uh, new covenant is a covenant of grace, where God empowers us to live according to what he calls us to live. The old covenant under the law brought condemnation. The new covenant under Jesus Christ brings us righteousness. Under the old covenant, there was a deep sense of feeling condemned, uh, judged, uh, because people were unable to keep the law. They failed over and over again. So there was a consciousness of sin. And that's how people were, uh, lived under the old covenant, because they realized their sinfulness. They realized their inability to keep the law. When you come under the new covenant, It is a covenant that gives us righteousness. It gives us a right standing with God purely by the grace and because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And so people in the new covenant have a sense of righteousness, of a right standing with God. Sometimes, unfortunately, believers continue to live with old covenant mentality. What do we mean by that? It means the, if, if, if somebody is continuing with that sense of guilt and condemnation, that's the experience of people under the law. Under the new covenant, we have righteousness bestowed upon us because we are under grace and there is no condemnation to those uh, in this new covenant because we are in Christ Jesus. So if you, are, you have been, up until this time, living under a sense of uh, guilt and shame and sin consciousness. That means you're, you're li- li- just constantly living under the, uh, uh, the recognition that you are unable uh, to meet God's requirements. You know, that is the old covenant mentality. You need to change that. You need to embrace what God has given to us in Christ, a 
consciousness of righteousness. We have uh, the, fa- the knowledge, the understanding that we are in right standing with God and there is no condemnation because we're in new covenant with Jesus Christ. Paul writes as uh, the letter. Uh, it, was, uh, it was all about the rules and the, and the re- regulations. In the new covenant is that of the work of the Holy Spirit. Under the old covenant, they had to follow the law. Under the new covenant, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God working in us, enabling us to live and follow what God has called us to, uh, uh, to, to live. The old covenant, the letter of the law, was something they read and they tried to keep on their own. The new covenant is a work of the Spirit where God says, I will put my word, my laws, into your heart and into your mind. So it's a something that's it's, it's the outworking of the Spirit of God from within the life of the believer. And so the believer uh, is changed from inside out. The heart is changed. The mind is changed because God is putting his word into our hearts, into our minds. Unlike the old covenant, where it was the letter of the law, it is what you read and what you had to keep uh, fr- uh, trying to work towards it with your own strength uh, uh, and, uh, and energy. The old covenant brought people uh, in subjection. It put people in bondage. The old covenant, Paul calls it the yoke of bondage in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. In fact, he calls it the yoke of slavery. It means people felt oppressed. They felt under bondage. They came under the heaviness of the weight of this law. Under the new covenant, the writer of of the book of James, James calls it the perfect law of liberty. This is the truth that sets us free. There is liberty. Even though there are requirements, God does want us to walk in obedience, so it's therefore called the law, the perfect law of liberty. There is law, meaning there is instruction. God teaches us how to live right under the new covenant. But it is the law of liberty. It's God's word that gives us total freedom. It is a work of the Spirit. And the Bible says where the, work, where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. So in contrast to people being under bondage, in the new covenant, we are people who are walking in liberty. We are walking in freedom. Under the old covenant, the, the minds of the people in 2 Corinthians 3, the apostle Paul says, were wailed. They couldn't see the glory of God. Uh, uh, The glory of God is hidden. uh, uh, And they couldn't understand or recognize who the God who was speaking to them really is. Uh, But then in the new covenant, our eyes are are opened. And we are able to see the Lord. Although, Paul says, it's dimly as in a glass. Yet we see him and we are being changed into his likeness from glory to glory. So imagine under the old covenant, there was no revelation of of, of an understanding of of, of the greatness of God. Many people, their eyes were blinded, their eyes were veiled. But here in the new covenant, we are able to see the Lord. We are able to know him for who he really is. And we ourselves are being changed into that same image from glory to glory. The old covenant, as a Hebrew says, was a covenant that uh, required ongoing sacrifices, uh, daily sacrifices, uh, and annual sacrifices that kept on being repeated year after year. The priests had to make uh, 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 sacrifices for the remission of sins because Hebrews tells us that the sins were covered, but it could not, there was always a remembrance of the sins. Whereas when you come into the new covenant, that ceases. There's this one complete sacrifice that Jesus Christ made. And the Bible says there is no longer any remembrance of sin. God says, your sins and your iniquities, I will remember no more. So we as a people, we know that our sins have been washed away. And we don't have to go on repeating any more sacrifice. No. There are several other contrasts between the old and the new covenant. I'll just mention some of them quickly. The tabernacle in which they participated, uh, through in which they worshipped, was what Hebrews calls as an earthly tabernacle. Whereas what the tabernacle or the place where we worship God is a spiritual, it's the true tabernacle uh, in heaven. 
in the old covenant, they had earthly priests, men who were valuable, who were weak, who could falter, uh, representing them. In the new covenant, we have Jesus Christ himself as our great high priest. He is the eternal one, and he is uh, without error, without fault. He was sin, he is sinless, and he is of a great high priest who represents us, and he ever lives to make intercession for us uh, in the presence of God. Under the old covenant, they offered uh, natural sacrifices. Under the new covenant, Hebrews says, Hebrews 13 says, we offer spiritual sacrifices. So what God is looking for is the offering of our sacrifices in spirit and truth, the fruit of our lips, our praise and our worship that we bring to God. We don't necessarily have to carry natural sacrifices. Now, of course, there are natural sacrifices we do in terms of giving, in terms of offering our time and energy and so on and so forth. But all of these things, God wants us to do it within spirit and in truth. So in a sense, they become spiritual sacrifices that we offer up to God uh, as, a, as, as a people who are in covenant with God. Uh, the old covenant, by Hebrews says, is a covenant that has been fulfilled and has been put away or has been done away. The new covenant, Hebrews says, is an eternal covenant, meaning this covenant is going to continue on and on and on forever. It's an eternal covenant that God himself made available to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, under the old covenant, it was only the high priest who could enter into the presence of God. Now think about it. Here's a big community of people, but there's only one man among all of them who had access into the most holy place, in the holy of holies. And he could go there just once a year. Under the new covenant, Hebrews chapter 10 tells us that all of us, every believer, has access to the very presence of God. Hebrews 10 says that there's a new and a living way that is opened up for all of us, and we can all enter into the holiest place through the blood of Jesus Christ. What a big contrast. Just one person on the old covenant could go once a year in the most holy place before the very presence of God. And here under the new covenant, all of us enter in anytime, anywhere we are, we enter into the most holy place we come with boneless and confidence, and we worship the living God. Uh, under the old covenant, uh, the people had been given a priesthood. Uh, the priesthood belonged to a certain lineage, the, the children of Aaron, uh, and they, they were the ones who were uh, uh, able to offer those sacrifices and to offer uh, uh, those priests, uh, fulfill that priestly role. When we come into the New Testament, this priestly role has been opened up for every believer who has been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. We all have been made kings and priests unto our God. So we all are clothed with robes of righteousness. And all of us can go before the very throne of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we all have access by one spirit unto the Father. A, a contrast, total dis difference from what took place under the old covenant. And so we see several distinctions or several differences between the old covenant and what has been made available to us under the new covenant that we offer up spiritual sacrifices as kings and priests unto our God. So what does all this mean to you and me? It means this, that as New Testament people, as people who are in a new covenant with God, we must recognize what great a covenant we have with God. It's good to read the Old Testament. It's good to know what is in there and how God dealt with his people under the Old Covenant. But it should help us appreciate what has been made available to us through the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and through the new covenant that we have with Jesus Christ. We need to discover and understand the immense blessings and the great and precious promises that have been made available to us as part of the new covenant that Jesus Christ has given to us. And that with those precious promises, by that, uh, that, that great and precious promises and the glory that God is giving to us under the new covenant, we need to rise up and be the kind of people God wants us to be. You know, 
The reason God brought in this new covenant was not only to open this up to the entire world so that even the Gentiles could now come in and be part of God's covenant and be called as God's covenant people. Not only was God opening up everything to the entire world, but he was really making it possible for us to be the kind of people he was looking for, the kind of people that he wants walking on the earth, people who worship him in spirit and truth, people who know what it means uh, to be his sons and daughters, people who know what it means to be in that relationship where there is no more uh, condemnation and judgment and sin controlling them, people who walk under the fullness of the blessings of God. So now what we do need to discover is how does the new covenant affect our lives? And how do we receive the blessings of the new covenant? If this new covenant is so much more greater and so much more better than the old covenant, then how do we walk in this new covenant? That's what we want to explore in the uh, uh, last and final episode that's coming up. Uh, and we want to just delve into it. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to understand how God wants us to live as new covenant people. So stay tuned. APC's Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in God's Word as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders and miracles. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And it's really exciting for us to uh, take this time to talk about the covenant that God has with us as His people. Uh, in our last telecast coming up, uh, we will talk about how we should live as new covenant people and the key, the very important key, to walk in the blessings of the covenant. So make sure you watch our next telecast. And before we close, let's pray together. And I want to pray God's richest blessings on your life. This better covenant that we have, the Bible says, has better promises. And we must learn to receive of those better promises. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the covenant we have with you through Jesus Christ. And God, your word says we have better promises. And I pray, Father, right now that the richness of this new covenant impacting our spirit, soul, and body be just released upon our lives. I pray for those watching, God, I pray your healing be released. I pray that bondages be broken. Every sense of guilt, shame, and condemnation be taken off their minds. A consciousness, Lord, a sense of righteousness coming in the hearts and minds. I pray that your blessing overshadow them in every area of their lives. I pray your provision coming into their lives of God to meet every need. And I speak your healing and deliverance over their bodies and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And until next time, live life the Jesus way. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to 
partner with us either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders and also in church planting in areas across this land. Feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India. Many young people seeking to be trained and equipped for Christian ministry desire an opportunity for hands-on involvement in ministry as well as interact, observe and work alongside mature ministers. All People's Church Bangalore is offering a paid two-year ministry intern program with the opportunity for full-time employment with All People's Church upon satisfactory completion. During this two-year ministry intern program, you will attend classes from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m serve in various areas of ministry with All People's Church in Bangalore. Interact with APC's pastors, staff and ministry leaders. Brochure with details about the ministry intern program and the ministry intern application form can be downloaded from apcwo.org slash ministry intern.